Hello, I'm Larry Von Mosch. Thank you for joining me as we explore praying with beads in the Catholic Church. Throughout history, people of many faiths and cultures, including Greeks, Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, and Catholics, have used beads as placeholders in their prayers. Among Catholics, praying with beads would most likely bring to mind the rosary. The seeds of the rosary can be traced back to the second or third generation when Christian hermits, monks, and desert fathers used stones and later prayer ropes to keep track as they prayed the Liturgy of the Hours and all 150 psalms during their day. Catholic laity began to imitate this process but found it difficult as many could not read Latin. They had to resort to repeating prayers that they had memorized like the Pater Noster, the Our Father, and later the Hail Mary. The tradition was to pray 150, 100, or 150 repetitions of these prayers. In order to keep track of the number of prayers said, a rope with knots tied in it was used. It later came to be known as the Pater Noster rope. It might have looked something like this. And with a little imagination, it's possible to see this as a precursor of the rosary that we know today. In the year 1213, 1214, excuse me, our Blessed Mother appeared to Dominic de Guzman, whom we now know as St. Dominic. He was the founder of the Order of Preachers, the, the Dominicans. She gave him a rosary and the prayers for the rosary. She asked him to pray the rosary daily as a weapon against heresy, sin, and to bring back those who had fallen away from the faith. In 1917, in Fatima, Portugal, Mary appeared to three shepherd children six separate times. During each of the apparitions, Mary asked the children to pray the rosary every day for peace, the end of war, and to make repentance, reparation for the sins against the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In 2002, Pope St. John Paul II gave us the luminous mysteries, the mysteries of light. These mysteries celebrate the public, public ministry of Jesus. We are now able to meditate on the, life of, on the early life of Jesus in the joyful ministries, excuse me, joyful mysteries, his public ministry in the luminous mysteries, his passion and death in the sorrowful mysteries, and his resurrection and ascension in the glorious mysteries. A wonderful way to do this is by praying a scriptural rosary. I would like to recommend a book called Scriptural Rosary, published by Christiana America. It is a great way, a great way and a great tool to help you keep focused on the life of Jesus as you pray the rosary. Each decade has a short phrase from scripture with its reference that is said before each Hail Mary. I personally have found this to be very helpful and again, it can be found in the St. Patrick's bookstore. If, we, if you would like to experience a scriptural rosary, please join us Friday mornings at 7.30 a.m. before Mass when we pray the scriptural sorrowful mysteries. If you would like more information about our Blessed Mother's message of hope for the world that she gave to the children of Fatima, I recommend the book Fatima for Today by Father Andrew Apostoli, last name spelled A-P-O-S-T-O-L-I. This also can be found in the St. Patrick's Bookstore. Now that we've talked a little bit about the origin and the history of a rosary, let's talk about why Catholics pray the rosary. The term rosary means a crown of roses. So the first good reason to pray the rosary is that every time we say the rosary, we present our Blessed Mother with a spiritual bouquet of roses. We are also complying with the request of St. Dominic and to the children of Fatima to pray for peace, the end of war, reparation for our sins and those of the world, and to bring back those who have left the faith. Another good reason is to pray for ourselves. Our Lady gave St. Dominic 15 promises for those who consistently pray the rosary. These promises can be found online if you Google 15 promises of the rosary. I would like to tell you about three of those promises. The first one is that those who trust themselves to me through the rosary shall not perish. Secondly, 
those truly devoted to my rosary shall not be without the sacraments of the church. And finally, I shall deliver very promptly from purgatory the souls devoted to my rosary. Another good reason is to receive a plenary indulgence. A plenary indulgence can be received once a day when the, day, when the rosary is prayed in a church, in a family group, or in a religious community. The indulgence can be applied to yourself or to a deceased person of your choice. Normal conditions for the reception of a plenary indulgence, which is sacramental confession, reception of Holy Communion, freedom from attachment to sin, and to pray for the intentions of the Holy Father do apply. Another reason to say the rosary is for personal growth in the faith. It has been said that those who pray the rosary on a regular basis will be freed from habitual sin. They will either give up the rosary or give up the sin. Finally, for the needs of the world. We pray the rosary as a community, as a sign of our solidarity. For our personal needs, those of our community, our church, our state, our nation, and the world. Here at St. Patrick's, the rosary is prayed 30 minutes before each Mass on the weekends. If you would like to be, if you would be willing to lead the rosary at a weekend Mass, please contact Bonnie LaPlante. Her phone number is 763-712-5805 and her email is Bonnie LaPlante, last name L-A-P-L-A-N-T-E, all lowercase, at hotmail.com. A second popular devotion among Catholics who use beads to pray is a chaplet of divine mercy. In the 1930s, our Lord began appearing to a Polish nun named Sister Maria Faustina Kowalska. He told her that he desired a feast of mercy to be instituted, which was finally fulfilled in 2002, when Pope St. John Paul II proclaimed the first Sunday of Easter to be Divine Mercy Sunday in perpetuity. He also told Sister Faustina that he wanted an image to be painted, as you see behind me. He wanted it to be painted for people to venerate, depicting the rays of mercy with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. He gave Sister Faustina the prayers of the chaplet and asked her to say it to honor the hour of his death, the three o'clock hour, and to spread the devotion for the salvation of souls. He told her, souls who spread the honor of my mercy, I shall shield through their life as a mother her infant, and at the hour of death I will not be a judge for them but the merciful Savior. He gave her the following promises regarding the chaplet. These are from the book, Divine Mercy in My Soul, The Diary of St. Faustina. And I want to read these promises to you because I want to make sure that I get them correct. Encourage souls to say the chaplet which I have given you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. When they say this chaplet in the presence of the dying, I will stand between my father and the dying person not as the just judge, but as the merciful Savior. Priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope of salvation. Even if there were a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive great mercy, great, excuse me, he would receive graces from my infinite mercy. I desire to grant unimaginable graces to those souls who trust in my mercy. Through the chaplet, you will obtain everything if what you ask is compatible with my will. Finally, Jesus told Sister Faustina that to whom mercy is given, mercy is required. He demanded that people revere his mercy and do works of mercy for their neighbors. To comply with this request, we are starting three new ministries at St. Patrick's. The first one is the Divine Mercy Prayer Warriors. This ministry is already in progress. It is for people who are willing to say the chaplet of divine mercy for those near death or who have died. If this sounds like something you might be interested, please call Carrie Rooney at the parish office 
and ask to be added to the volunteer list or to request the chaplet be said for someone. The second ministry is device, Divine Mercy Mentors. This ministry is for people who are willing to learn the chaplet and then teach others how to pray it for themselves and for the sick or deceased. Finally, Div Divine Mercy Workers, for people who want to commit to doing spiritual and corporal works of mercy for others. Mercy Mentors and Mercy Workers are in the developmental stage Watch for announcements when they become operational. Here at St. Patrick's, we pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy five minutes after weekend Masses. We gather at the back of the church near the statue of St. Patrick, and we would welcome you to join us if you would like, we would like you, excuse me, we would like you to join us. And if you would like to volunteer for saying the Chaplet after Mass, please again contact Bonnie LaPlante. We also say the chaplet during the three o'clock hour on the first Friday of each month in the worship space. You are again encouraged to join us if you can attend. Now I would like to give you some resources for information, further information on Divine Mercy and on Divine Mercy Sunday. The first book I would like to recommend is The Diary of St. Faustina. Again, this can be found in the St. Patrick's Bookstore. Another book I would recommend is The Second Greatest Story Ever Told by Father Michael Gately. This is available through our bookstore and can also be found on form.org. Uh, there's another book, it's a brand new book that just came out by Father Chris Alar. It's called After Suicide. There's hope for them and for you. You can order it through St. Patrick's Bookstore. There are two videos I would like to recommend for you on Divine Mercy and on Divine Mercy Sunday. The first one is, excuse me, both of these posts can be found on YouTube. The first one is titled Chaplet of Divine Mercy for Promises. The second one <coughs> is called Divine Mercy Promises, and that one is by Father Ed Broom. An audio CD I would like to recommend is The Necessity of Divine Mercy, again by Father Chris Alar. This is available through Lighthouse Catholic Media. You could get it through our bookstore, and it is also found on formed.org. An application for your phone, iPad, PC, or laptop that I would recommend is called Laudate. It is free, can be found in your app store, and has many different forms of prayer, including interactive rosaries, chaplets, and novenas, as well as the liturgy, liturgy of the hours, confession aids, Bible study, daily readings, etc. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found this helpful, and God bless. <laughs>